women now have a world-class tour of their own and equal prize money at the major events. She was the first president of the WTA in 1973 as the best female players broke away from the rest of the tennis world. It was the same year that she defeated Bobby Riggs, a 55-year-old former men's Wimbledon champion, in the so-called Battle of the Sexes match. They played for $100,000, but it was much more than that. Riggs had already beaten Margaret Court of Australia, the other great player of the time, in a challenge match. The credibility of women's tennis was threatened, and King knew it. A worldwide television audience of 50 million people watched it from the Houston Astrodome. I thought it would set us back 50 years if I didn't win that match. It would ruin the women's tour and affect all women's self-esteem. In a nutshell, this was her legacy. Female players were paid far less than their male counterparts at the time, and Billie Jean King's role was to make it okay for them to compete and train and sweat and toil on the court. Nowadays, of course, it's a given. In 1972, she'd been paid $15,000 less for winning the US Open than the male winner received. King said she would not play in 1973 unless the prize money was equalized. And it was. She was a great athlete. She was the first female tennis player to fight for equal prize money. Um, and she's just... She's the reason why women can go to college on first scholarships. So she did a lot across all sports. Um, she told me pressure was a privilege. And uh, I love that. So I, whenever I feel pressure, I feel like, wow, I'm privileged to have this pressure. And I'm going to make the best out of it. King's fight for equal rights has persisted for 40 years through the Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative. The Williams sisters, Serena and Venus, are on the advisory board. It's not a fight that is over. Women's tennis professionals are estimated to earn around 80% of what the men do. But it's a fight that she's up for, even in her 70s. I go back to those days, but now I go forward and see the depth of the players and how um, many great players are and how the game's improved over the years and the technique. And I don't know if people realize um, the WTA and the health services, it is amazing what we do. Everyone talks about we're ahead of even, we're as good as the NFL or better. So from a health services point of view, the women are really fortunate to have the support system, the administration, and, uh, and all that. Billie Jean King won her final WTA tournament at 39 in 1983 and became a coach and mentor to countless players afterward. But it was only the beginning of her tennis story. Well, personally, I feel that in many ways, Billie Jean has been my mentor um, since I was 13 years old. Um, I was a junior, um, traveling with my parents. Um, I remember first time I met her, it was, it was a grass court event, just a lead up to Wimbledon, and, and we were just sitting out on the field, and she came up to my parents, and there was an icon in front of me, and I couldn't even believe that she would take the time to, to speak to us, and um, she was very, she had this amazing demeanor and, and calmness about her. The superstars of today are only too familiar with what she has done for them. Now we are, um, I can say, at the same level like the men's. So uh, she has done a great job and uh, I think we should thank her for uh, involving in this, this sport, this way. King has devoted her life to the game and to equal opportunity within it. That makes
makes her a hero of tennis. My focus is on growing our sport um, and also helping the WTA. And the tour was so exciting. When we go city to city, there was so much excitement. You have no idea. We're, we're one of the reasons tennis grew so much is we had the WTA tour. We had one week Martina playing Chris. The next week you had me playing Chris or, or Martina. Every single week it was just amazing. And we, we drew unbelievable crowds in those days uh, with the people. And we hit all kinds of cities. And then we also were lucky that we started going overseas. And you know, we started in the United States, but then now look how global we are. And that was our dream, that any girl in the world would have a place to play. But we wanted our sport to be global, even though the opportunity started in the United States of America. But since then, of course, Europe and other, and other continents are, are really the leaders more so 